Hey everybody, and welcome to another edition of the BA Sales Kettle Call Holistic Healing Hour, Grandpa Bill's Grunts and Groans, and actually my YouTube channel offering each and every day, encompassing my three daily podcast shows for the last five and a half year, five five years and some months of doing this, encompassing a couple of three categories of subjects within the three shows. Those of you that follow the show, welcome everybody, one and all, some by our invite, some ubiquitous. I'm going to put a lozenge in my mouth here. What I'm going to do here, I play off of my radio podcast show a lot. A lot of what I do here mitigates out into what I do, how I do it, when there are in-studio guests, when they're not. The subject matters we talk about, programs that I'm doing for hopefully self-enrichment now in full retirement, and as opposed to a bucket list of worldwide travel or whatever, which for infinity, there's nothing wrong with worldwide travel bucket lists. Mine's to try to keep focused with all the stuff I did to myself, the toxicity, the mercury poisoning, the amalgam fillings. The eyeballs, the Chevy, the breaking down through toxicity in and of itself and making a really crazy career choice for somebody that's been a health nut and in really good shape. Selling industrial chemicals at one point in time with skull and crossbones and yada dee dee, yada dee da. <clears throat> what that's all about is a lot of the things not to do to yourself that we've all done in some different degrees. But being blessed that all along the way, I treated everything pretty much natural medicines all the way my entire life. And uh, we'll talk about that here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have some fun, hopefully, is I've talked about playing the radio show and then the YouTube channel, so for the audio-visual counteracting and to promote both shows and get the element out on camera to play of the five senses about food for the mind, the body, and the soul, both in the actual sustenance part of foods to eat and good clean water, but food for the mind, the body, and the soul, whatever, people like more ethereal, whatever, whatever. What I'm going to do here with one of my methods that I practice through Dr. Anthony Mativier's program, Magnetic Memory Method, that I've talked about. It's now, I'm now in my 10th month, almost 11th month, it's as Wednesday or whatever day it is, becomes November 1st. Yeah, Wednesday. So in one of my archival shows, a recent note... <laughs> For those of you that have no clue what I'm talking about, ubiquitously check out the archival shows for those of you that have followed along a little bit. I did a mnemonic as Mr. Scrooge, but Magoo, Mr. Magoo, one of my favorite all-time characters, and Mr. Magoo's issues with being so blind and whatever mine are in the lazy eye and the macular operations that I've gone through. In the mnemonic of Mr. Magoo being involved as all my mnemonics, and I did one crazy one that he had his old fashioned thing that he, when you used to do that, the optometrist flipped it over his eye before they had all the modern equipment, before they had the handheld one. So, Mr. Magoo being blind, I had the mnemonic in a synopsized version come in and he literally crashed down on my already bad eye. So what I'm going to do on that and attempt to do on the radio is do a mnemonic still as Mr. Scrooge with Bob Cratchit. Good Lord willing. (laughs) It's going to start out in a business atmosphere, their office, you know, as kind of like the scenes from the Christmas Carol, stay with me, because I'm trying to devise this in my head, 
when I go to the radio show. And it's about holograms as well, because I am gifted with that, even though I have to shake, rattle, and roll because of all the aforementioned reasons. So I can kind of close my eyes and see all of that. The office and Cratchit and Magoo as Scrooge talking to Cratchit, but more like a modern day version. Stay with me. And I'm going to gear it around <clears throat> specifically Kelp, but it's kind of about the things I've done. Both humans and animals, past tense, retired. Thanks for being patient. I'm, I'm literally laying this out in my head, and hopefully it will make some sense at the radio. <laughs> so it's going to be <clears throat> Scrooge in the Christmas Carol theme of things, maybe a modern-day version of him and Cratchit talking in that office atmosphere. Kelp will be involved holograms trying to envision it as part of the technique within my program with Dr. Anthony Mativi. That that's one of the things that's definitely helping me trying to stay focused with all my brain damage and stuff. So stay with me. So here, what I want to do is start out with my main mentor moments that I've talked about in business and in life, now fully retired, mostly in life. And we get to the part-time factions that I might share. So those of you that do follow the show down in my warehouse and now in full retirement for I don't know, a year and a half, whatever it is, I'm still catching up from retirement because I do it out of my domicile, everything. It's a small 1,000-foot condo, my wife and I, my office upstairs. So I'm still settling in from old stuff, displays, and I'm coming across all these old things I did, Jacob Marley, with the Scrooge thing. <laughs> Thanks for ingratiating me to do this. This is pretty much self ingratiating <clears throat> On the radio show, I'm going to talk about a template for something I've done so many years, unique to different commodities and things that I have done in my life, going way back to the 1970s when I was just about getting out of college. 77, 78, because I had to keep going back and forth. I had a child at a young age. So anyway, I came up with this template in one of my first careers, basically the office supply business as far as going outside as a marketer or a sales post at that juncture and having all kinds of kid on marketing, and then all these supplements. So I came up with this advocacy program to combine with <clears throat> majors in social welfare in college the first time. <laughs> okay, well, it was called that. So then combining, this is like 50 years ago, better part of At that time, combining my give back thing and trying to do what I could and all of that. <laughs> and definitely on a pauper's income, Cratchy. <laughs> Haven't worked for many misers. It's my sense of All right, so I came up with this advocacy program many, many years ago. And all the things I did, I just kind of used the same template that I created to whatever it was. All my stuff from office supplies to fish oil to all the things I did, and then when I said, boom, bye-bye, corporate America in 1995, and I had to go out on my own, what was I going to do? <clears throat> because I didn't go to school for any kind of trades or whatever. I actually went for computer science. I don't want science uh, story that I've never worked day one in that. So that only did a lot of you got. I came up with the template for then, breaking in, too, because I love the animals and people, and I supplied both. I said, well, what's my key? What's my niche? What am I going to do in the land of the iron? So anyway, the template goes through, and when I jumped into the dog arena and the show dog arena and the activity dog and the ability dog, I pegged it into my kennel cell. And part of the time, my fish oil business, it clicked, it worked, whatever, and I kept the template and had it 
available and there is an advocacy program that I'm going to continue to talk about in retirement. Next year is right around the corner. It will take out world events and all of that. And we'll outline it again. Spot of an hour call direct to the manufacturer program when we're in if extra advantages for people to shop when we're in if in the world with availability and what have you. Okay, former business life. As a main mentor moment, just, it, you know, I'm trying to service that for whoever wants to observe or listen or understand what we all went through of a certain age. And I just had a recent guest about this. You have to fall down, bang your knees. You have to fail to succeed. Thanks for ingratiating. Okay, in some file cabinet, how are we doing on overall time? Great. Most of them. I found some notes of when I went out on my own in 1995. And you're going to be a sole proprietor. What are you going to do? How are you going to do it? I took a synonymous. I went back again and took a course, took a, a business course. <laughs> That's how I patched work the rest of my so-called college thing because I have family. Well, my son and my wife, one child. But uh, I I was 22 or whatever. So I kept going back to night school, day school, working around the clock. la dee dee la dee da And then eventually as I got older from working in, I don't know, 25 years, better part of poor corporate <laughs> because I started earning my age. And just saying, Johnny Paycheck, take this job and shove it down. For kind of the same BS that it's all about now by being controlled by Big Brother and holding <laughs> the eyes of Wall and Mars. Okay, so I came across what I drafted from taking a quick refresher business course. I majored in business when I was in college. And I came up with the then marketing plan for what ultimately was going to be my kelp business that has something to do with these mnemonics and uh, Dr. Anthony's program overall because way back when I first met him via online, I haven't had the pleasure of shaking his hand or anything. And uh, I knew I was going to sign up, and I observed him, listened to the tapes and the videos that that I still do as part of the course. And I'm going to revisit the course that I've completed, I think, my third time around, because I have to go back and refresh my memory. When I finally sent him a room to break the ice and whatever, I asked him right out, hey, I'm going to take you to the course, and I'm definitely going to do the uh, Free PDF, can you do me a favor? Because I think by me doing this video of what I used to do, I can connect into a couple of the principles I had learned about the videos that were out there in this free memory map. That was right as the last year, calendar year ended, and the new year became. He's been on my show twice, he's coming back on. So through all of that, I'm trying to create all of those mnemonics right now as Mr. Magoo, because I got that ball rolling the other day, and it is almost Christmas season, <laughs> and I love that. I love that. It's probably one of my most favorite novels. For another reason about Charles Dickens' life, because I'm a history buff, and that was all about convoluted religion, and he couldn't profess it as in England. Anyhow, this was my devised outline for the marketing plan then as a sole proprietor and as I was going to do feasibility studies and so forth. Real quickly, and we'll wrap this up. Verbatim, the marketing plan as it was, life and business, Jacob Marley, then, now, retired, the both of Christmas, all of it. <clears throat> And this is what I had written as my marketing plan to myself and what I had to consider by being a sole proprietor, which I was for, oh my God, almost 30 years. So, verbatim, notes to self in the kind of formal business plan when I did present it. So, the marketing plan should be connected to your company mission statement. 
mental and moments, things we talked about through all these archival shows. In the training, when you decide to go to the current companies and the two commodities that are involved that we talk about at the shows when we're there. And mental and moments in life, wherever you are in your careers, if you listen in, if it's advisable and applicable in your life, all three. <laughs> the mental and moments. All of this might lead to my moments. Maybe. Next year. Maybe. 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 We'll see. So the marketing plan should be one eye now. Thanks, everybody. This, that's the whole thing. It's like Colonel Clank with a monocle and holding his hair. <laughs> we get through it. The marketing plan should be connected to your company mission statement, SWAT. I'll break that down. It stands for strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, which is a marketing term, the business terminology. I'll talk more about that at the radio show. The company's recent history, I didn't have any. You know, I had to consider that in its infancy. So these were programs of my business plan and my marketing plan, if you will. So my company, recent history, the product, the price, the promotion, the place, the distribution, all things that I had to proverbial encounter on the proverbial drawing board to put my feet in the proverbial water against in the land of giants. And what are you going to do now, Grandpa? And I wasn't a grandpa. Just yet, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> Move around. So, internal resources, as you were going to develop them, external environment in 1995, the external environment and whatever was going on in the world, which is part of this. Technology, economic conditions, always. Legal, political situation, disclaimers, products. You know, you killed my little Jimmy. You know, you have to be prepared for all that stuff. Labeling, ching, ching. You know, you know. So, what's the competition, which was pretty huge, especially in the animal industry? Got some some statistics for you. Statistics back twenty five years, twenty eight years ago. Uh, thanks for bearing with me. Legal, political situation, cultural, social expectations, mm, you know, back then, competition, the market size, target market, demographics, geographics, psychographics, I'll break that down more, percentile, I said for 80-20, was it feasible, reality, was it something attainable, I'll talk about that in upcoming shows. My position would have had to definitely be niche, and it was. That was the whole premise to try to jump in. Like WWF <laughs> wrestling tag team. You know, I was fighting. You know who it was, and so do I. Isn't that awful? Andre the Giant and all those. Hey, you know, whatever. <laughs> Go for the theater. Theater that was obviously fantasy theater stage. Whatever. So the market size, target market, demographics, geographics, psychographics, the position, the niche, the present market position. Twenty eight years ago, the position by consumer benefits of product sales association, other relevant differentiators. Thus was the business course refresher that I took to pass it, and a lot of this was gleaned from that. But it was my marketing plan <laughs> for my business. Problems and opportunities, the marketing objectives, quantitative, sales volume, market share. <laughs> but seriously, it's mental moments. It's what it was and how it was. Profitability, quantitative, progress towards subjective goals, image builders, position, niche. Time frame, my long term, five to ten years at that time, what was it going to bring compared against the competition, the cycle past, <laughs> not the cycle, well, the cycle past <laughs> and the cycle graph, <clears throat> the time frame, shooting to give it five to ten years for, for like any new business or whatever, in reality. Fortunately, I turned a profit in my first year. <laughs> it was enough to <laughs> keep the lights on and, you know, to find profit. But I turned a profit. Uh, 
<laughs> so let's see. Price above market, at market, below market, break even point, experiment, promotions, coupons, rebates, sales, deals. I did them all. I had to. Break even point, BEPs and units, BEP. Don't worry about any of this if it's, and if you, it, it's things that business people, if you're in business for yourself and overhead, brick and mortar people, nobody preaches here, but you know from where this all comes from. How many units, the total cost, fixed assets, whatever you do, if you have some heavy equipment and what have you, to change, to change, as many of you all know. Total variable costs with all the algebra and total sales volume and theories, theorems, place, which obviously was going to be my house and it was and still different domiciles along the way. <clears throat> my creative message and how it was going to differentiate my product at the time and products. And from the competition and emphasizing consumer benefits and advertising job is to communicate your desired position, especially when you do it all yourself in the land of giants as a sole client. So I continued to write out my business plan. Sales promotion should be a reward for your loyal and new customers, customer reward systems, advocacy programs. What was I going to do different and how was I going to do what was out there by everybody in that bar, the coupons, blah, blah, blah. I came up with some perceived innovative programs and, you know, it, it, it went well for a while. And that was a while ago. And then, you know, the cost of overhead and before the crazy stuff. Anybody that gets into volume and you're the small person in the equation and the weight of it was always expensive. And it was definitely getting on the incline. And I was having aspirations to retire, but um, I loved it so much, and I still do. And then all of the other foolishness came along the way, and I just continued my 16-year uh, part-time supplemental income job with all the jobs I had to support my passion and continue to churn a profit and afford the overhead. By design of being a sole proprietor, because I still was. The supplemental income ones are different. What they were it was a different degree of no management and mostly negotiable that way. I'm talking about it. I was kind of like an independent contractor in most of them, and some of them officially so. Okay, so there's other details that I went through, but if I do say so myself, and the person that taught me the course and that class, Kudos to him, and God rest his soul. I can't remember his name. Okay, in closing, I came up with the theorem and the base of, at that time, Kennel Kelp. You know, my name was going to be Kennel Kelp, and about kelp, one of the many sea vegetations that I was going to market for animals and for humans, because it's good for both. If you join into the shows, occasionally you hear the old outtakes of the Kennel Kelp. And every once in a while, another product is in one of the old advertising outtakes, the Liberty Wristband. But this one was kelp. It still is. I just do it directly. You know, I refer everybody directly now. So I had my satellite, if you will, with my feeder programs and my, you know, organic kelp extract was a consideration. I was a sole proprietor. I would have had to go into production and have somebody do that money under private label. I did that with a partner in fish oil business. It costs a lot of money to do that kind of stuff, even then. So one of organic kelp for dogs was definitely the niche that, you know, okay, that's a keeper. <laughs> ding, 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 around my satellite, budget, market plan, so forth. Marine algae in, in, because it was really pristine then still too as much as the oceans could have ever been, but they were. And our kelp, because of the source, Thorvin, way over there, is still to this day as pristine as it can be and kick gloved that way. But nothing's impervious to toxicity now. We have acceptable levels of arsenic and all that. But they are so many parts per billion in that scheme. And the only thing that is anthropogenically pollution-free is this water right here. 
in any other deep cavernous water, which means they never experienced nuclear fallout or atomic bomb or any of that other foolishness. It comes from the ground, which has a lot to do with health and how I marketed it and through all the craziness, I'm still here today because of it. Kel, almost done. Dog nutrition, I figured, let's hone in on that. Many animals, and it did mushroom out, I serviced them all. Farm animals, pigs, uh, you know what I'm saying, horses, and uh, farm animals. We applied it, sold it as such for soil application, which it is. It's very healthy plants, and how good it is for humans, too. So that was the nucleus of the satellite of what was indeed going to be my business in the mind when I made all the decisions. And, yep, I'm going to give this a go. And then plugging it in along the way and kelp granules, I still kind of sort of uh, deal in it. And pretty soon that's probably going to end for a couple of reasons. And that's all just like Organic kelp granules, I'm still the regional distributor and all of that, but not really. But not really. I do it for one client. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, so that was the kennel crap birth, if you will. And it's not death, it was always Thorin kelp. With the good graces of Thorin by going all the evening care, what I called it, with their good graces, because I was representing them. Directly on their payroll. Okay? And I was in touch with all their management, and I remember fondly it was great. And uh, I was fortunate that that was my marketing plan, that was my business plan. And uh, I've tried to do that throughout my life now. So there's my main mentor moment. We went to 27 minutes. I will be revisiting dental care. Trina Felber, America's Nurse, my name for. I've talked about it. There's a show out there, a recent note called uh, Oral Highway. We'll revisit those here later. I'll be talking about that at the radio so uh, in the shows, so whichever way one bounces off the other. May mentor a moment here today, business and life, the mnemonics, Scrooge, all the above. Stay tuned. I'm going to try to do that on the radio show. It should be fun. It should be some chuckles for laughter, hopefully perceived as such. That's medicine too. It releases dopamine and endorphins. So lazy eye, Dr. Screw, Mr. Screw, Colonel Clank, uh, you know, whatever, no teeth, toothless, Mr. Magoo being a dentist, all of it. Mnemonics, we're going to take it away and see if we can incorporate the then, the now, and the moving forward with how all of this is good medicine for you, your plants, your animals, and this planet. If we get too paying attention, real soon. Bye-bye for now. See you guys at the shows. Thank you so much. Peace, everybody.